If you are using a Gavin 6A basic RC transmitter that you may have gotten with one of Dynam's smart ready-to-fly packages, you're already aware that the gyro in the MSR66A sport receiver works pretty well with the standard settings. If, however, the conditions you fly demand more or less sensitivity from the gyro, well, you're kind of stuck. While the Gavin computer radios allow you to adjust the settings, the Gavin 6A does not. One very good alternative is the Detrim 3-in-1 programming card that is the topic for this RC Gadget Talk video. one programming card isn't really a card at all, but it's a small box about the size of a deck of playing cards. It has an LCD screen, some control buttons, and input sockets to connect the three devices it can interact with. Let's do a quick overview before jumping into how to operate the device. The first of the three-in-ones function is stabilizer programming. By plugging in the programming card into the MSR66A or the Detrim SR86A sport receiver using the included micro USB cable, you will access the programming variables just like when using the Gavin computer radios or the Detrim Blitz 9T radio. It will be handy to have read and understood the stabilizer instructions before getting started and to have them nearby for reference. The card will also program the iStone All Standalone Stabilizer from Detrim. The second function is the ability to program the Skylord Advanced Series ESCs for planes and the Volcano ESCs for RC cars. By plugging the ESC into the programming card using the ESC's throttle connect wire, you can program ESC variables such as brake settings and harder soft starts. Again, your ESC instructions will be handy in selecting the proper settings for your application. The third function is the ability to plug in the balance tap from your battery and get both total voltage and voltage by cell. The programming card will accept up to eight cell batteries. By keeping up with the discharge characteristics of the cells in your battery, you can get a sense of overall battery health. Healthy batteries will discharge each cell within a tenth of a volt or less from each other. Okay, so let's plug this in and see how it works. Okay, so now we have the model plugged in. Uh, the radio is on, the receiver's made connection, the propeller is off since we're here in the workshop. Uh, and then I plug the, um, the micro USB co cord into the MSR66A receiver. And so you can see that the, um, the programming card uh, initialized when it plugged in. It was powered through that USB cord. And, uh, and then the various things that you can set are listed. You can work through the memory just pretty much the same as on one of the Gavin um, computer-based radio. So at the top corner, you can see that I'm on page one of nine. And so there are nine things that I can change. And, uh, and then I can move down these programming steps using the up and down buttons over here. I can make a selection by using the, um, the carriage return or the angled arrow over here. And then I can go backwards using the curved uh, arrow, much like you would see on a TV remote or a video remote. Uh, and then I can move back out of that step. So let me take just a second and um, move the camera and zoom it in on the screen so you can see that better. Uh, just know that here are the, um, the various uh, buttons you're, I'm pushing to get the responses that you'll be looking at. <clears throat> okay, that looks pretty good. Now, in the instructions it says, first thing before you start setting these things is to go down to some of the bottom choices. And so we're going to go down to the bottom and make sure that the wing type is normal on this little Primo that I'm uh, looking at. It's got a normal wing. It's not a V-tail or a delta wing. Uh, and then the other thing is um, uh, I moved up, and then it's the mounting direction. And in this case, I've got the label pointed up. If I wanted to move in here and, and if the airplane was sitting 
if the receiver was sitting on its side or upside down, I could make the changes here. So I'll select that, and then you can see you can go it's down, right, left, uh, and then move right back down to the up position is where it is, and then I'll press that little carriage return button and select that. So I'll sc scroll back up to the top of the selections and uh, select the fly mode, and this is where I have them assigned to a three position switch, and this tells the receiver what signal from the switch to act on. So switch position one, I want it off. Uh, if something were to go, go uh, cattywampus with the gyro, I want to be able to turn it off when it's airborne. Switch position two is the normal mode, which is where I fly it most of the time. That's just normal uh, gyro assist in windy weather. And switch position three is the safe mode, and that's the auto recovery mode. So if I were to invert this or stand it on its tail uh, on purpose and then flick the switch to position three, the airplane rolls level and it works really pretty cool. It's kind of fun to do that just for fun. Uh, in a serious situation, if you lost orientation, you could flick that switch and given enough altitude, your airplane would return to uh, straight and level flight. So again, I'm gonna go back. Now, these various gain switches, uh, I'll sele just select one. And uh, now the reverse is if the servo is moving in the, the reverse direction, it can be reverse or uh, normal. And then the, the angle gain or the rate gain is just the amount that the servo is gonna move. And these are things that you would change if when you were flying your model, uh, it was bouncing around a little bit. If the servos were uh, chattering as a result of having too much gain from the gyros in the stabilizer portion of the receiver. And so generally you want to start pretty low. I've got these set where it came uh, and I found it to work fine. So it's at about 50%. If you were looking at one of the older stabilizers with mechanical potentiometers, this would be set to about halfway. So there are a number of gains that you can adjust. You can adjust the roll gain, the pitch gain, and then the roll offset and the pitch offset uh, are controls that you wanna check. You can check both on the ground and in the air. And so if you set the airplane on the ground, level flight, and then turn the gyro to the auto recovery, you should have the ailerons in the elevator neutral and that's what you'd be looking for during that auto recovery. You can also check that in the air if you were to initiate auto recovery uh, and the airplane rolled or if it climbed or descended, you could make changes to the roll or pitch offset to make sure that uh, when you moved into the auto recovery that the airplane uh, was in, in straight and level flight. So let me select the pitch offset here just quickly and then you can see the little arrows come up here and then you can use the up and down buttons to change the, um, the offset and uh, just up and down. These work for me and I'm, so I'm not gonna mess with them. So I'm gonna go back, leave that choice and then now I'm back down to the bottom of the list. So that's pretty much the three in one menu uh, for the stabilizer that is built into one of these um, MSR 66As or SR 86A receivers and of course, it would be the same thing if you were to use one of the standalone gyros that also is programmable from this particular device. So the next function is going to be programming the ESC. So to get this display with your 3-in-1 programming card, uh, with the power off on the airplane, plug the throttle uh, lead from your receiver here into the side of the ESC programming card, and then um, plug in your battery, and then that'll give you this display. And you can see in the top corner, there's eight different things that we can work on. So let's work through those really quick. Again, we're just going to use the up and down, the select and the back buttons to make our choices as we did before. So the first programming item is the brake. You can select on or off. For standard airplanes, I usually set the brake to off because I want the propeller to windmill in the wind. Uh, if I were to be flying a glider, however, I'd set the brake to on which would uh, stop the motor from rotating and the propeller blades would fold back against the fuselage. Next is the battery type. You can choose between LiPo and nickel metal hydride. The battery type is important because that 
has to do with how the ESC is going to sense your low voltage and establish a low voltage cutoff. Speaking of the cutoff, the cutoff choices are uh, cutoff or soft cut. Now what that means is that uh, the way I have this set with the soft cut, as the voltage approaches the low voltage cutoff, uh, power to the motor is going to be gradually reduced, and I'm going to notice that the airplane doesn't perform quite as well. With the cutoff setting, uh, when the voltage hits the low voltage cutoff, it's just going to stop. And so that can be kind of a surprise. So I prefer the soft cut on the uh, most of my ESCs. The low voltage uh, cutoff voltage is the next choice. I've got mine set on mid, which is 3.15 volts per cell. Uh, low is 2.85 and high is 3.3. Uh, mid or high are good choices for batteries. Low would not be so good because you're not supposed to bring uh, LiPo batteries down below 3 volts per cell. And normally I fly uh, to where I land with well above that regardless. The start mode is either um, normal, soft, or very soft. And this has to do with how fast the motor starts to rotate. Uh, normal is just fine for uh, typical airplanes. The soft or very soft would be used for helicopters where you have to get um, the rotor assembly uh, rotating and, and there's a lot more mass to move. Timing mode is low, mid, and high. For most airplanes, it's going to be mid where I have mine set. If you had, for example, a high KV motor with a small prop and you flew the airplane very fast, that might require a high motor setting. It has to do with um, the commutation that's happening within the ESC. And so for most airplanes, mid is going to be fine. If you find the motor is stuttering and, and acting up a little bit, this might be a setting that you might want to consider changing. The next one is the load to default, and that's simply uh, similar to a reset. It's just a matter of loading all the default settings. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to pass that by. And then the about is simply uh, the firmware and software and everything here on this particular 3-in-1 card is version 1.0.0. So uh, we'll go back to that. And then we've gone through all eight settings, so that's the ESC programming. And so in this display, we've got the battery tap plugged in at the bottom of the 3-in-1 card. You can see I've got a little blue zippy battery plugged in. And then I hope you can see the numbers here in the light. And it basically just go lists uh, one, two, three, four, up to eight cells, and it uh, displays the voltage for each cell in uh, kind of a compact listing, uh, one through eight. And then across the total, it uh, gives the total cell voltage. It's uh, 15.01 uh, volts for the battery in total. And so this is a battery that I've uh, flown and, and landed with, and so the voltages are down. And I can see that Overall, the balance in the four cells of this four cell battery are not too bad. The highest one's about uh, 3.8 and, and the lowest one's about 3.67. So they're starting to spread a little bit. So it'll be something that I keep an eye on to make sure that my cells continue to discharge at um, a similar rate when they're flown. So those are the three functions of the 3-in-1 programming card from Detrim. The Detrim 3-in-1 programming card is a handy tool for both setting ESC and stabilizer variables, as well as monitoring battery performance. If you are working with a basic radio like the Gavin 6A, or like to keep track of some of the technical aspects of your model's performance, the Detrim 3-in-1 programming card is worth the $20 investment. As with other devices of this kind, they generally only work with the brands and device series noted in their description. If you are building up a collection of Dynam planes or are using Detrim receivers and stabilizers in a variety of models, you'll want to add this handy tool to your flight box. As always, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up icon below the video and consider subscribing to the RC Plane Views channel. Click on the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.